this is how I play the game! Next question from Blackspawn89. He says, Phil, watching some of your older playthroughs, I found them to be much less PC. You had jokes that didn't shy away from sex, be, uh, gay jokes, ethnic jokes, etc. While some find those crass and vulgar or offensive, some also found them to be funny and something completely different. What made you change your joke style in your Let's Plays? You made much, you make much less racist style jokes, much less sexist jokes. What happened to cause such drastic changes in your commentary? Was it being, uh, uh, was it a long, oh, oh excuse me. <clears throat> was it that you were in a long-term relationship with Leanna, and made you realize that sexist jokes maybe were unjust? Was it a business move because people were doing montages of negative stuff that you were saying in your videos and basically turning into slander, acting like you actually meant that stuff? What, when, and why did the change in your commentary style have less potty humor and focus more on being tame and conservative? Um, and that's from Blackspawn89. Um, here. First of all, I don't think that overall my commentary has changed. If you actually watch my commentary from an old school playthrough back in the day and you watch my commentary on a newer game, with a few exceptions, I think you're still going to see a similar style of commentary. Now, admittedly, admittedly, yes, there's less cringeworthy humor now in my playthroughs. Although I'll still bring it up, I'll reference a girl's big tits or whatever. Most of the time I'm not using the most crass, common, basic lowest common denominator style jokes all the time anymore, alright? There's a few reasons why. Number one, when I started back on YouTube, alright, way back in the day, I was heavily influenced by the angry video game nerd, and that guy, he is the most over-the-top character, right? Fuck this, fuck that, sh you know, shit dicks, and, and all that stuff that, you know, everything you can think of, you're just swearing every other word usually in his videos. At the time, I was actually trying to be the most over-the-top kind of guy you could get on YouTube and see how that would work in a commentary style for live gameplay. That's number one. Number two, back then, it was the Wild West of YouTube. And what I mean by that is, it was the burgeoning era when people were coming to the site in droves and everything was new and different. It's not, today it's more polished, it's more professional. Everything has to conform to this certain formula for success in order to succeed. You know what I mean? It wasn't like that back then. Back then it was very drastically different. So for me, it was like, let's just try anything. You know, throw any fucking thing out there, right? And, uh, and see, you know, what happens. And I did, I did, I went, I pushed it all the fucking way to the limit in a lot of cases with the stuff that I would say in my videos. Let's face it, right? Now, admittedly, okay, it eventually got me into trouble. I mean, take a look at the Blip TV situation where I was making jokes about, I was basically impersonating a Nazi character. Similarly, and this was directly a, a, supposed to be a direct kind of reference or even homage to the same thing they had done on the Howard Stern radio show where they impersonate a Nazi character and he would say offensive things to Jews, but it's supposed to be tongue-in-cheek humor because you know you're supposed to be an over-the-top Nazi character. That was the point of the segment on the Howard Stern show, and I was trying to do the same thing. Blib didn't care. They were like, dude, you're making Nazi racist jokes against Jews, forget that, and they basically kicked me off the site because someone pretended to complain about it when in reality it was a troll who was trying to get me kicked off the site and even publicly bragged about it later. But you see what I mean? I finally reached that point where I was like, okay, maybe I finally reached the limit. I finally now, and that was, by the way, over seven, no, that was seven years ago? Six and a half years ago. <clears throat> I was like, you know, we've reached the limit here where I don't think I could really push it to the limit anymore, okay? Um, and since then, yeah, as, as you noticed it was a slow kind of curtailing it a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Over the years, I definitely still said things that were generalization, racist jokes, and things like that. But again... I'm not racist, and I think anyone who watches my stuff would know that. You know that I'm just making general jokes to insult everyone. I've insulted my own heritage, Italian culture. I've insulted many times as, mu as much as anything else. So I'm an equal opportunity, you know, jokester, pretty much. Um... But what you gotta realize is that things change over time. And it's funny because the same things, these these crude humor, right, that got me popular on YouTube back in the day, today people f literally will bring it up and say, Phil's a racist, here's things he said, you know, seven years ago in his videos, and they'll bring up those jokes and act like I actually meant it and use it as trying to say that I'm a racist, right? Now, back in the day, people thought it was funny. They understood the humor. They were a lot more open to it. Now, YouTube's become more PC and more SJW. I mean, the SJW movement didn't exist back then. So you're talking, now everything is all so... Now anything you say will be twisted in a way to make you look bad, right? So, <clears throat> I did have to, over time, kind of adjust my commentary for a more widespread audience and try to make it so that I wasn't constantly offending people, which is funny because I don't think I've ever tried to intentionally offend anyone with something I said, but people get touchy and offended by anything these days. You know, it's very different. Again, 
20, 2008 to 2011 YouTube versus 2012 to 2017 YouTube are like two completely different fucking groups. It was one generation of people who got it and now the next generation who don't. And it's just such a different thing now. It really is. It's true that the same humor that got me popular back then and made me a big YouTuber basically flipped on its head and got me in trouble later on, even though it's the same shit, right? And it wasn't me that changed, it was the culture of the YouTube viewer and the new generation of viewers coming in who were basically different people and had different beliefs that changed everything, okay? Now, I'm not to say that I wouldn't make jokes like this from time to time, I still do. It's just that I don't do it constantly anymore. And, I mean, ultimately, is my content better because of it? I don't know, that's a subjective question. Some people might say, man, I really wish the old school Phil would come back. And other people are like, no, I like the new school Phil, who is more mature, he, he's learned a ton over the years, he knows how to walk in other people's shoes now, and he realizes why maybe what he did back then doesn't stand now and isn't a good thing to do now, right? But that's the thing, there's funny, there's those people... Everything's black and white, there's always right and wrong, and nothing ever changes. They think just because something I did five, six years ago, I did it back then, that it stands now. So because I made those jokes on Blip TV, you know, in in uh, late 2010, that means I'm the same person now, and I would still do those same jokes, so I'm a horrible person, you should never watch my stuff because I'm a racist. And this is the shit that people come up with. They make these fucking stupid-ass videos, slanderous videos and montages, right? And it's just so dumb. <clears throat> so anyway... It is what it is. That's basically what happened over the years. Times change, right? Um, Niche2440 uh, asks, he says, Hey, Phil, I saw a video on YouTube addressing the YouTube ad apocalypse. And in response to people claiming that they were going to leave YouTube because they're making less money, he says, well, then you know what? Those people shouldn't even be welcome on YouTube. He basically argued that YouTube is supposed to be a platform for a hobby and passionate creators instead of big business and that any money from ad revenue should be considered as a bonus for making content. My question is, where do you think the line is drawn between doing what you love and making money? <clears throat> All right. Listen, everyone is being negatively affected by this YouTube ad revenue thing. Everyone. Even people who are just viewers, because you know a lot of your favorite content creators are saying, listen, it's not like it used to be and I can't do this for a job full time anymore. And it sucks, right? It really does suck that this is the reality of the situation. I was always one of the people who said that YouTubers should be genuine in what they're doing and not just doing it as a job for money, right? I did YouTube videos starting in 2007. Started doing them more regularly in 2008, and I did them all the way through early 2011 before I ever placed an advertisement on one of my gameplay videos and made a penny doing it. So you're talking the greater part of three years, I was doing this as a hobby because I loved it, not because I ever expected to make money doing it, right? And there were tons of people over the years, tons, who jumped on the YouTube bandwagon of- I can make money doing it. Just because they saw the green. And I'm sorry, I gotta call it out, and people will give me shit. People like Toby Turner and I Justine, who were known for just being vloggers, for being silly. You know, they're attractive people, so they got popular on YouTube because people wanted to see attractive people do vlogging and jokes and stuff. Oh, wait a minute. Gaming now is profitable? All of a sudden, I'm gonna open a gaming channel and start playing games and monetizing my gameplay videos. Even though they're not good at games, they never even talked about video games before in any of their fucking videos. It's apparent when you watch them, they're not gamers. They jumped on the YouTube cash money bandwagon to make a quick buck, and they did it just for business, not because they cared about it. And there's tons, sadly, there's tons of YouTubers, alright, who've done this. And they come in, oh, my focus on YouTube is to make money. So I'm going to come in with all this fucking capital to invest on a YouTube business. And I'm going to hire professional grade, you know, videographers to edit and film. And I'm going to have a movie studio where I'm going to have all this stuff where we can film. And we're going to have vlog segments and we're going to have commentary segments. But we're going to have professional level gameplay videos. And they come in and they create a whole business around what they want to do on YouTube. Okay? Is there any love and attention in there? I don't know. You know, I guess it would actually be individual to the group of the person. Maybe some of them literally did start on YouTube small and blew up and became these more professional things, right? And now maybe they're really screwed over because they're taking a giant financial hit because they did invest so much money or whatever to become professional and now their income's 60% lower than what it used to be. That would be a bad situation. But I certainly, certainly, all right, would not support someone who came into YouTube only for business, right? And, oh no, ad revenue went down. Oh darn, I feel so bad for you. You wanna know someone who I don't feel bad for? Those fucking brothers, I forget their names, it was a big controversy last year, who made those fucking shitty ass react videos. The lowest common denominator of content you could put on fucking YouTube. They came into YouTube rich, they were already rich when they started their fucking channels on YouTube, okay? They stole the idea of reaction videos from other people to make their YouTube channels, 
and then they just threw a ton of money at it because they were already fucking rich. Who knows where they made their money? If they even made it or if it's mommy and daddy's money, who fucking knows, okay? And they made a YouTube business based around stealing someone else's idea, and then they had the audacity last year to try to trademark the idea so that no one else could make reaction videos. I mean, that's like the epitome of scumbag on YouTube. And it, it actually fucking baffles me that anyone would even watch another one of their videos after all this 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 informa factual information came to light last year about what, how fucking just disgusting people they are, and people still watch their shit. Like, that blows my mind. People like them, oh no, their revenue went down 60%. I have no fucking sympathy for someone like that, all right? <clears throat> but, but. For someone who really does it for the love of doing it, you can tell they love what they do on YouTube, they're doing it because... They love doing it, and maybe, by chance, they somehow found a way to make it profitable, to do it full-time. Now you're doing what you love as your full-time job? That's exactly what happened to me. I had an office job that I was working, where I was very underappreciated. They were overworking me and having me do things that weren't within my pay grade, but they were paying me pittance to do this fucking work, and then they laid me off, okay? I was doing YouTube for three years as a hobby, and just by chance, it so happened that when I got laid off, you could start monetizing uh, gameplay videos on YouTube at the time, and I just happened to have a contact who led me towards Machinima, who partnered me, and it all worked out. So here's someone, I was passionate about games beforehand for three years, I started doing it as a job, and I was able to do what I loved while make money. That's like the ideal situation. People like that, I feel really bad for, if now, all of a sudden, now they can't do it anymore because maybe they were, you know, they weren't super filthy rich. They weren't making tons of money doing it. And then all of a sudden now their ad revenue goes, boo. And you know what I mean? Now that, what do you, now I got to go back to doing a nine to five job. There was a girl who does YouTube videos and someone just linked me to her video randomly. This was when YouTube ad revenue started plummeting. And this girl, apparently she was in like uh, ar either architecture or engineering. And she says, literally I did that job as just busy work. I didn't really like it. I had no passion for it. I was good at it, but I used it to pay the bills. But then when I started doing YouTube, I started making money doing YouTube and I turned this into my job and I love doing this. And now I can't do this for my job anymore, guys. So I'm going to have to stop making YouTube videos or I'm going to have to make less YouTube videos because I have to go find a job in that field again. Those people I feel bad for because they did nothing fucking wrong, right? What did we do? We just kept putting out content that people watched and liked and fucking it was YouTube that fucked up and screwed those people over. <clears throat> Was she cute? I don't even remember what she looked like. Someone in the street says, was she cute? I don't even remember what she looked like. I have no clue. Um, but, that being said, the question here is, where do you think the line is drawn between doing what you love and making money? Um, in the ideal world, there is none. In the ideal world, you could do what you love and still make money doing it. Although I realize that you are incredibly, incredibly lucky if you're able to do that. I'm still doing it, but I'm barely making it, guys. Like, I am at the point now where... You know, if things don't keep going positively like they are right now, if I have another big negative thing happen to me, I'm going to end up having to sell my house, which I don't want to do. I'm going to have to sell my house. I'm going to have to try to find a way to move into a much smaller place around here in Washington State. Um, and I'm probably going to be screwed financially for the rest of my life. I'm probably going to not be able to do this full time. I might have to split my time between this and one or two other jobs, which I know is going to suck horribly. Um, and I, you know, I don't, I want to keep doing this for a living, but I, you know, I need it to stay how it is right now and get better. It has to stay at least where it is and slowly get better over time or else I, you know, I'm not, and I'm, I am, I'm one of these people who's been massively negatively affected by the stuff going on. Um, and I love this, you know, again, I love covering the new releases. I love all this. I would not do this if I didn't love it. I would stop right now. Okay. I, you know, I, I would have stopped years ago with all the negative shit that I've gotten over the years. Just think about it. All the slander against me, the, the hatred against me, these fucking obsessed kids, right? And I call them kids because they are, when you have the mentality that, it's okay to do the things that they've done to me. You're a kid. Because no mature adult would think like that. Even if they might have the bodies of adults, they're still children in their fucking heads. You know what I mean? Like, uh, there's so many negatives that have happened. There's no way that I would keep doing this fight and love it. Some people don't believe that, but I think they're just stupid. Because they can't believe that someone like me could persevere through all the negativity that's happened to me. And I would keep plugging at it. No, I do this because I love it. I want to keep doing this. I don't ever want to stop. I want, like I said, even long term, if I, if I spread my efforts between a business and this, I still want to do this to some extent. I love it. But 
we gotta see what happens. I'm hoping things stay positive and things can get better here, especially in particular on Twitch. There is growth happening, and if I can keep it growing and keep it going, then maybe things will turn out all right. We'll see. <laughs> Alright, I'm not dead, but I swear to god I wish I fucking was.